Hi everyone, Sasha here from Mountain Pass. We're excited to share with you this Cybertruck we have here for development. So in addition to our Rivian, we've uh, spent a lot of time with this truck now and there's lots of differences between the Rivian and the Cybertruck. And we're gonna dive in deep to the suspension and brakes and aero of these two trucks and kind of show you their differences and pros and cons and what we like and think maybe could be improved. So let's check it out. So in case you don't know, we've had a Rivian on pre-order since the first day you could order these trucks in something like 2018. So when we got our Rivian in January, we were so excited and it's, it was pretty much everything we, we hoped it would be. It's, it's a beautiful truck, the interior is fantastic, all the little details, it's really, really nice. And for, for Rivians, for the, being the first car they've ever made, it was um, pretty incredible. Um, there are a few little bits about the Rivian that we don't totally love and the, some things about the Cybertruck where it's actually a bit better. So comparing the two trucks, right away the Rivian has a bigger battery, it supercharges faster, and they're almost very similar in terms of efficiency. So for towing or going long distances, uh, the Rivian is, is, I would say, the winner just because of the, the Cybertruck charges a fair bit slower once the battery um, gets the state of charge up a bit. Now that might change in the future, but right now it's a clear win for the Rivian in that category. Uh, on paper, the Rivian should ride a lot better because it's got these really advanced hydraulic dampers, air suspension, uh, no sway bars, but actually on road, the Cybertruck rides much, much smoother than the Rivian at any ride height. So that was really surprising to us. And despite being pretty ugly, the Cybertruck has other advantages too. For starters, despite its wild shape, it's more aerodynamic than the Rivian, in big part because of this really steep windshield. It has steer by wire and four wheel steering, which actually makes it super nimble. And as you already know, if you're interested in Cybertrucks, the wheel only moves about 360 degrees in total, which is pretty wild to get used to when driving. And the Cybertruck also has a 48 volt system architecture, which means all of its wiring is lighter and they're able to use smaller cables. And on the high voltage side, the battery is 800 volts compared to the Rivian's 400 plus. So that just means that system can be more efficient and lighter as well, having the same power output. Let's dive in closely in the front ends of these two vehicles and show you all of those suspension and brake differences in detail. So let's take a look at the Rivian front corner here. We've uh, got the wheel off and what you immediately notice is this wild looking air spring and damper. There's hydraulic lines, um, electronic connectors for, for valves, and, and of course the air fittings. So this damper is really quite complicated and it's just a bit disappointing that the on-road ride quality isn't quite as smooth as we, we feel it should be able to be with this setup. Um, otherwise, we have more of a traditional uh, front upper control arm and lower wishbone setup. The interesting thing here is that you can see the knuckle doesn't wrap over the tire, so there, you're not limited in terms of tire diameter that you'd be able to fit. And then otherwise, we have a, a pretty thin front tie rod. So, of course, that's to protect the steering rack, but one wonders if that couldn't be made a little bit larger. That's definitely something that we've heard having being a fuse in the front suspension. Um, otherwise, the fore aft control of the suspension is done by a forward mounted bushing, whereas the Cybertruck, it does it with what we call a compression rod. So the control is from the back. This should also make the Rivian a bit quieter and ride a bit smoother. So another point that's kind of interesting uh, as to why the Cybertruck uh, is, that, is that much smoother. So the Rivian has these hydraulic active dampers which Monroe calls active roll control. Basically, what that means is that they're hydraulic adjustable roll bars. So they can decouple with a, with a bypass valve, so the wheel can be totally independent and not influence the other corner, or they can be coupled. And exactly how they're coupled and exactly what they can do is not exactly clear, but certainly they can act like a sway bar. So if this wheel is compressing up, that force is gonna be transmitted to the other side and try and also compress the other side. So if this wheel was rolling and it was being pushed up, then normally the other wheel would be extending. But because it's being pushed up by that hydraulic fluid, it makes the whole vehicle roll less. The brakes on the Rivian are much bigger in the front, being about 30 millimeters larger in diameter and a couple millimeters thicker as well. 
So for towing, the, the Rivian brakes are, are certainly, I mean, usually you should just be using Regen, but if you're going downhill and you need to use a lot of friction brakes, the Rivian would be a, a better option. Coming over to the Cybertruck's front end, we can see the same sort of suspension architecture for the most part. Um, it uses a cheap stamped steel front upper control arm. Um, so Tesla is certainly trying to cut costs on these vehicles and you can see that as well with a, with a steel front subframe compared to the aluminum one on the Rivian. There's a big boy front anti-roll bar on this thing. And again, we come back to that point of being impressed by how well the Cybertruck rides on road considering all of these different things that are working against it. Um, it also has these two large valves in the damper for compression and rebound control. Of course, it doesn't have the hydraulic lines that the Rivian has, which allow the Rivian to basically have hydraulic anti-roll bars. Uh, what else can we tell you? The, the front knuckle here wraps around. So unless you bring the tire out, you are limited on overall diameter. Although you could chop this stud right here to get a bit more clearance if you needed to. Otherwise, the front of the Cybertruck's pretty traditional. The, you can see the disc is quite small, but the brake caliper is pretty massive. This is four piston compared to the Rivian six piston, but it's more of a, a substantial caliper with a bigger bridge. So I would expect this to be a stiffer feeling pedal compared to the Rivian. And um, that's really about it for the front end of these vehicles. But when we go to the rear, you'll see there's, there's more significant differences in the architecture and design between the two vehicles. Okay, so here at the back corner of the Rivian, we have basically a trailing arm multi-link design. So there's two arms that kind of go fore aft to control the forward and backwards movement of the wheel. And one of the, the lower trailing arm, the damper bolts to, and that carries quite a bit of load. Then there's two other arms. One's the main camber control link, and the other one is the spring arm, which is kind of, can be thought of as a rear lower control arm. And that carries a lot of load as well with the rear spring arm. The links are quite short, spe specifically the toe link, which means you're gonna get a lot of toe change and camber change as the suspension articulates. So compared to the Cybertruck that we'll show you in a minute, the rear suspension here is a bit more challenging to keep it, to keep the alignment exactly where you want it at, at a number of different ride heights. Otherwise, it's a sliding rear caliper, the rotor's a, a decent size, um, the, the damper is the same as the front, it's got hydraulic connections, and we have a brake line here that is right at its limit in terms, of, in terms of being bent right at the crimp. So that's not super ideal. And again, maybe something Rivian will revise in the future. Okay, let's go check out the uh, Cybertruck and see how the rear of that compares. The main thing that we see when we look at the Cybertruck in the back is this wild rear toe arm that ties into what's basically a traditional steering rack. It, it looks almost like a Model 3 steering rack. So that's a solid rack that goes across both sides. So the four wheel, the rear wheels are tied to each other. So they can't change individually, but the entire axle steers together. The rear upper control arm is also super long. Again, a cheap stamped steel piece compared to the Rivian's all cast aluminum arms. And the front upper arm and the rear lower arm are very similar in terms of length. I think it was something like 95%. Uh, so the camber change is minimal uh, as this thing articulates through its full range. And with this long uh, tie rod, you, you have very minimal toe change through that motion. So that means the alignment's not gonna change much at various different ride heights. And for off-roading, you can have really long travels without having significant camber and toe changes. And this thing should be able to handle pretty heavy forces as well. Although the rear lower arm doesn't look like the strongest thing in the world. Um, Different to the Rivian, the damper and the spring are in one part and they tie into the lower control arm. And you can see that they're tied in at a point that's fairly far back from the pickup point and slightly rearwards. So we can definitely see the possibility of bending that arm uh, if you really land it hard. There's also a little baby anti-roll bar that ties into this arm. And again, of course, we didn't see that on the Rivian because it uses the hydraulics. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the aerodynamic differences between these two vehicles, and uh, then we'll wrap this thing up. So from an aerodynamic standpoint, the Rivian is obviously more of a traditional truck. It has a flat hood and a steep uh, windshield, and then it breaks off into an open bed tailgate. So it's, it doesn't have the shape advantage that the Cybertruck does, and of course it's gonna have more drag. And in terms of the aero bits on it, it 
doesn't have the same level of detail quite as the Cybertruck does. It's kind of just got these more traditional flaps in front of the tires, and it doesn't have a ton of shrouding on the lower control arms uh, for aero. So basically just the center part of the underbody is totally smooth and uninterrupted. And that's really, I mean, otherwise the, the Rivian does have a really cool upper rear spoiler, which um, channels air down after the roof line and tries to get it to, to kind of take that traditional rear window uh, shape. And the same thing with the sides, the sides kind of chamfer in and there's little um, winglets that help, again, get that air to, to come in and try and reduce drag around the, the cab. So it, it's definitely got some aero tweaks working on it while still retaining a kind of traditional pickup truck shape. When it comes to the Cybertruck, you can see Tesla's kind of thinking most people are gonna be using this vehicle for on-road. There are these big air deflectors here that have some shape and try and really wrap air around the front tire. And Tesla specifically tells you to just pull these off if you're going off-roading. So the difference here being that Rivian thinks the vehicle should be ready to go off-roading at any moment. Tesla is willing to make some compromises for on-road aero. All of the lower control arms have plastic aero shields on them. And you can see Tesla's kind of really shaped everything to try and design the underbody to have the most smooth and uninterrupted flow region as possible. At the back of the Cybertruck, it's got a really ugly looking boxy diffuser block, but that's simply designed to have the shape that has the least drag possible. So whereas the Rivian has more of a curved up rear, um, we won't call it a diffuser, but rear bumper, and the Rivian actually has a little, almost like a little kick plate on the rear that helps it detach the air or keep the air attached. The, rib, the Cybertruck doesn't bother. It's willing to accept having a shallower uh, departure angle and focusing again on aerodynamics. So it, from the underbody side of things, the Cybertruck is certainly more oriented towards on-road aero and less to, to off-roading. Um, there's also really large flaps again at the back of the Cybertruck to help get air around the rear tires. And of course it's super steep windshield um, means that the air has very little resistance to change direction, only a few degrees to go over the roof line. The super sharp point at the top is, is actually not as bad for aero as we all thought it would be. And the air stays more or less, I guess, attached there and then has an easy ride down over the uh, slatted uh, bed cover and then kind of clean cut off and separation at the back of the truck. So despite the thing being a sideways fridge on wheels, it actually has a shape that's more conducive to going through the air than a generic pickup truck. And if Tesla wanted to put some curves in this vehicle and give it some shape um, while retaining this kind of triangle, it would be even more aerodynamic. But obviously it's hard to curve stainless steel and it looks like the panels all usually only have one or two bends and, and there's no bends obviously that are, that are overlapping each other. So when you can only work with vehicle design in the way that you would build a paper airplane, for example, it's really challenging to get the totally optimal shape for aerodynamics. Uh, both trucks have front air skirts. So the, the Cybertruck pulls air in through the, through the grill here and passes it through the tire and the Rivian, same sort of thing, right on the side of the bumper here. The Rivian one's a bit smaller, but um, that helps curtain some air over the tire and, um, and remove some of that wake that develops. The Rivian also has a slot at the back of the fender arch to, to just evacuate some of that air. Um, so again, little details on the Rivian that help it, but not the same extreme measures that are taken with the, with the Cybertruck. So that's a bit of an overview of these two trucks. Uh, it might've sounded a bit biased towards the Cybertruck at some point, but that's because we focused more on the mechanical bits. It has to be said that our hearts are with the Rivian. Um, we just love the way it looks and the interior and, and all the little attention to detail. Um, yeah, it's just, and the pass-through and the frunk size, it's just such an awesome vehicle. The Cybertruck definitely has some advantages and um, it would be cool for both trucks to kind of share some of those ideas. And I'm sure that'll happen down the road. So I hope, you found it interesting, and uh, if you didn't, that's too bad.